Hi, welcome to the breadboard. In the past, we've looked at a number of different PLCs, and most of these end up having to use proprietary industrial relay ladder or some other kind of programming graphical environment software that would then be uploaded to the PLC and away you go. One of the trends that's been happening over the last while is more going towards an open source kind of environment. We've looked at things like the Siemens IoT 2020, for instance, in the past. Now, specifically for this video, um, we're going to look at some new products from Bath Electronics. That's electronic with a K, not a C. So it's a, it's a German company. And they sell exclusively through RS Components. What makes these PLCs noteworthy at the moment is that they have now been made open source. Not only have they been upgraded to a full 32-bit ST microcontroller, they have also uh, had their firmware opened up and made available for programming using different languages. In the past, with the older versions of the Bath Mini PLCs, they were programmed using a Micon programming environment, which was a graphical design tool, very, very similar to many other PLCs. What's happened now is that BART has opened up the programming environment and introduced two more programming environments for you to use. So not only can you still use the Micon environment, but you can now also use the Kyle C programming environment, which you can download for free for these PLCs, but you can also now use the Arduino programming environment. Um, BART has been very, very active in trying to make their PLCs available to pretty much anybody. Their prices are really good. Right now they range, the particular ones we're looking at, from about 89 euros through to 110 euros. There are three models that we're gonna look at and we'll see the details of those in a moment. But what's more important is the fact that Bart Engineering has taken the effort to create a seamless environment and integration into the Arduino programming environment. This is a really good news for anybody that has grown up using Arduinos, using the AVR micros or ESP826s and things like that, in that now what you have is the exact same hardware for industrial, automotive, marine, and other environments where you would have to program it using some proprietary and fairly closed IDE to now having this completely open Arduino IDE. And all of the ST micro functionality then becomes available to you so that you can do, uh, well, pretty much whatever your imagination allows you. Now, the IO does have some restrictions in that um, the ST microchip has certain pins dedicated for output, for input, for analog, for PWM, and things like that. And that's just the nature of uh, having to put drivers on the output of this little uh, SD Micro 32-bit controller so that you can th do things like driving a 1.4, 1.5 amp, 24-volt uh, load, or uh, reading in from 24-volt signals, or driving a uh, 0 to 10 volt output, for example, um, or reading in uh, an analog value that could range from 4 to 20 milliamps or from, say, 0 to 10 volts. You can't do any of those things directly with the microcontroller. And in order to keep the costs down and to get certification and things like that for these microcontrollers, they do have the effectively dedicated I.O. functionality pre-assigned. But outside of that, you can program them pretty much to do whatever you want. Now, the range that we're going to look at also includes CAN bus and has the ISP programming socket brought out to the top two. So you're using the standard ST micro programming environment. In fact, it's so standard that the programmers adapters that you use are the actual ST micro programming adapters. And we'll have a look at those in a moment as well. Anyway, enough chit chat from me describing what you're going to get with these. I'm actually quite pleased to see that more and more companies are starting to do this. And actually, just as a note, I've been very impressed with Bath in that they are very reactive to what customers ask of them. They do have a customization um, process that you could invoke if you wanted a custom configuration of one of these uh, mini PLCs. But even out of the gate, I know that it wasn't very long ago that I was talking with RS Components about whether these things would be better with an Arduino programming environment as an additional option or not. And then a matter of a few months later, it has now been released and 
made available to anybody that wants it. And for the price, you know, these can things can be used in the home. Uh, as I said, automation, uh, marine-based facilities, uh, fairly harsh environments. They have CE certification right now, and Bath is actually going through the process of getting these boards also UL certification for sale in North America, which will be great once they've got that. They already have UL certification for some of their older uh, mini PLCs so that they can be sold in North America, but it's an expensive and lengthy process to get that certification. And these PLCs are new to the market from Bath, so it will be a little bit longer before they actually have that certification in their hands. But stay tuned because I don't think that it will be an issue uh, technically to get it. It's just a case of going through the process. So um, I will let you know if and when that occurs. Not if, but when that occurs. Anyway, let's have a closer look at these PLCs. Uh, we'll first of all have a look at physically at them, and then we'll see what's involved in getting them up and running with an Arduino IDE, and then we'll try a few sample programs with them. Okay, so here's a closer look at the range of STG800 mini PLCs. Uh, we have the STG800 here, which is this one. Uh, these IO connectors just simply push in and out. The actual uh, complete microcontroller, as you can see, completely uh, potted into this enclosure and the only things that are exposed are the contacts on the top so that you can obviously plug things in and out. Um, one of the really nice things about that is you can pretty pretty much put it anywhere. Um, it's not, you know, obviously 100% waterproof, but it certainly will stand up to some harsh environments. For mounting these things, you can use cable ties on these little slots on the corner and just, just basically any way you could cable tie it, even onto a cable wiring loom, it would probably work because these things are very, very light. Uh, and you can also actually screw it through. There's two holes here for screwing it to some kind of chassis if you wanted to. Um, you have all of your I.O. along the top here, and what we have is basically um, 10 I.O. pins. So uh, one, two, three, four, five of them as outputs and five of them are inputs. We have the a CAN bus interface and power supply, and we have uh, RS uh, TTL 232 interface up here so that you could connect that to some other uh, communications devices if you wanted to and also there is the ISP programming header and then we have a user LED that you can use for indicating status. Now the STG800 has the 10IO as um, four of sorry five of them let me just get the specific details for this one. You have a 32-bit ARM processor three analog inputs that can take 0 to 30 volts and are 12-bit ADCs, it has a event counter that can run up to 25 kilohertz, pulse and frequency counter inputs up to 40 microseconds. It contains four solid state outputs that can handle 20, uh, 24 volts and 1.5 amps easily. It has a PWM output that is 16 bit PWM 1 hertz to 25 kilohertz. Uh, CAN 2.0, CAN open interface, uh, the rest I've already mentioned. And plus you've got obviously the uh, choices of programming environment as well, whether it be the Arduino IDE, whether it be the micro programming, uh, which is the full graphical traditional PLC programming environment or using Kyle IDE. The next one in the range is the STG810. Now this one basically has the same specifications as the STG800 except that it has an addition of an IRDA interface. So there's a little window here so that you can use infrared programming. Now, it, you might think that's kind of old school programming, but it does introduce a level of security. You have to be local to it um, and in order to communicate with it. Now, there are some additional things that I'm gonna show you as well, but uh, let's get through the different models first. So as I said, this one is basically the same as the first one, but with the introduction of IRDA. And you're only paying an extra $10 on this one, sorry, 10 euros on this from the 800. So you're not paying big premiums for these extra features. The last one that I have here that you can get is the STG820. And what this one adds is a true analog output. So it has the IRDA, 
it has the 10 IO with the same specifications as we talked about before but what it adds to the mix is it has the analog output that can output 0 to 5 volts at up to 100 kilohertz. There's 10 euros difference between each of these models in one-off quantities but um, you just pick the one that you want. So if you don't need the analog output then you don't need to buy the SDG820. Um, if you don't need the IRDA then you could just go right down to the SDG800 and save you a little bit of money and if you're putting a lot of these uh, in an environment um, then that will be easy to do. With the CAN bus of course it gives you the ability to communicate with a whole host of other devices. For instance um, Bath has a very nice motor controller module. Now this one's been around for a little while it's the SDG700 and it's in a very ruggedized um, enclosure and you can program it and it has all of the I.O. and everything else like the other ones do but it has a stepper motor controller built into this and it supports the CAN bus so that you can communicate with it from a remote device. But the one special feature I mentioned with the SDG 810 and 820 with the IRDA interface is that Bath has come out with a parameter programmer now what this is, is it's a um, battery powered program with a small touch screen on it that allows you to use the CAN bus or the IRDA, um, sorry, it's got CAN bus interface and IRDA interface and it will actually allow you to interrogate one of the STG810 or 820 or any of them with the CAN bus on them and read and update parameters in effectively real time like on a live system if you wanted to. So it's called the hand sized parameter programmer with CAN IID interface for all Bath Mini PLCs. The other display that I have here on the stand is this one which is not a programmer but it's actually a full um, it's called a DMA 20 so it's got a little two inch display on here uh, it's not battery powered so it won't power up right this minute but we will go through it and what this is is a versatile CAN base uh, CAN bus based touch display for panel mounting and it supports all of the Bath mini PLCs now obviously the, you need to have the ones with the CAN bus on them and the only two interfacing here is you've got a USB probably for power if you want. It's got an IRDA interface. Actually, if you look at the back, it even tells you. So you've got USB, and if you can see that very well with the reflections. Um, you've got the IRDA interface, and you've got your CAN bus interface. And this is actually designed rather nicely to be able to just simply screw a one of the microcontrollers right on the back of it. So this is designed to be um, chassis mounted. You can just put it straight onto a panel of some kind. Uh, some thumb screws here just loosen up. It releases the top and then you could just push it through and clamp it onto some kind of panel very nicely. Uh, if you want the PLC to be local to it, you can just screw that to the back of it and away you go. Uh, this is the programmer for them. And as you can see, it is a standard ST Micro ST Link V2 uh, programming interface. So we have a USB interface to go to the PC and we have the header that then you actually get this cable to plug into the STG 800 through 820 to be able to program it. So very very easy all fully supported uh, devices. Let's go and have a look at what it takes to get the Arduino IDE up and running to talk to these devices and we'll get the uh, infamous blink sketch running. We'll see whether you need to change anything to make that work or whether you can just literally drop in the blink sketch and hit run and see if it actually will flash the user LED. So let's go check that out. 